Well, hello to everybody who's already joined us and those who will be watching this on the replay. Today, we're going to be talking about HealthSpot Unleashed, elevating your nonprofit's marketing with all-in-one solutions. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. And today, you have your hosts, Kyle Barkis and Zach Payton. You're going to find out a little bit more about them in just a moment. But I'm going to show you on the next slide how you can engage. I know someone has already asked me if they were on mute. Yes, you are on mute. And if you would, put your questions in the Q&A using the Q&A feature down at the bottom of your screen. We're going to email you the video and the slides by tomorrow maybe by later today so you'll have that so you can get some more insights. And if you need the closed caption, just turn on the CC button look at, located at the bottom of your screen. I'm going to go ahead and move out of the way and turn this over to Carol Barton. He's the co-founder of TAT Network to share more about HubSpot Unleashed. Have a great webinar, everybody. Thanks, Aretha. Uh, and good afternoon or good morning, everyone, depending where you're dialing in from. Um, as she said, my name is Kyle Barkins. I'm joined today with Zach Payton uh, from our team here. Uh, myself and my partner, Joe, co-founded TAT Network about 12 years ago now. Uh, specifically to service, serve and service the nonprofit um, space and ecosystem with technology and marketing tools that were, you know, we found that were, were not available before. And over that time, the past 10 years or so, uh, we've been a partner with a company called HubSpot, which is a marketing automation uh, and, and, and an evolving tool, evolving tool uh, that we've seen a lot of success with in the nonprofit space using for marketing automation, capacity building, um, website development and design service services as far as like managing volunteers, managing memberships and the like. So today I think we're going to go through, we will go through a lot of that. Um, some of the use cases, uh, why we picked it uh, and tell you a little bit more about ourselves. Uh, and Zach, it joins me today as one of our, our HubSpot experts here at TAP. At TAP. Um, he's our solutions manager. He works on probably all of our, our HubSpot accounts with, <laughs> with nonprofits, everything from helping them get set up and onboarded all the way through to helping them launch really um, sophisticated campaigns. So the quick agenda today, we're gonna to go through background on TAP. I kind of just went through that, so I'll breeze through those slides. We'll talk about what a CRM is. We'll give you an overview of HubSpot. Um, we'll talk about the different phases for attracting and converting using uh, the marketing hub tool. We'll talk about donor management through the sales hub tool. We'll talk about like volunteer and membership management through the service hub. Uh, we'll give some ideas on how to switch to HubSpot give a background on HubSpot pricing, and then outline some of the TechSoup services uh, that, that are available to you all. So as, as I mentioned, the quick background, uh, TAP works primarily with nonprofit organizations. Uh, you know, if you got here today, you actually got here through something that TAP Network put together uh, at some point in time as we are um, an agency for, and the HubSpot developer and agency for TechSoup. Uh, we're also those, uh, the exclusive partner for digital marketing and website development and AI services. Um, through TechSoup as well. So if you go through their website, uh, go to one of the services tabs at the top and you look for digital marketing, look for AI, look for uh, website services, do that drop down. Anything there will, will come really straight to us. Uh, we can certainly help you there. Uh, how we can help nonprofits, we kind of run the gamut, everything from strategy, creative branding, as we talk about today, HubSpot implementation and marketing, um, paid media, public relations, and really anything in between. We build a lot of custom software applications for nonprofit organizations, for two on ones, for state and local governments, um, for a number of different foundations. We build a, a ton of websites. We probably build about 100 websites in the last year or two, uh, build, manage, or maintain about 100 websites in the last year or two. And we, uh, you know, we pride ourselves on our ability to get something like that stood up pretty quickly. Uh, like I said, and everything really in between. So to get started today, uh, what is a CRM? So a CRM is typically, well, some would call it a contact relationship management system. We like to call it a constituent relationship management system as we know you all are serving your community, serving your constituents, trying to make a bigger impact. It's really all the tools, uh, the technology, the processes, all that, everything that um, your organization would manage uh, in one place. A lot of times you'll see people using things like Microsoft Excel to do this. They'll use lists. They might even just have it like in a note on their computer. So. There's different very varying levels of these. Um, we, we, we're looking to build something out and put something in place that, that helps live, that, that sits at the middle of all of your communication, all of your, your, um, your efforts, all of the campaigns you're running, and then it can help guide that over time and, and becomes like the, the single source of truth. So as you're looking at, at a CRM, as you're looking at tracking campaigns, 
as you're looking at, at um, creating reports, as you're looking at running, sending emails or anything of that nature to communicate with people, having everything in one solid place is really is really what that CRM is, right? How, how do you manage that? How do you uh, make sure that that stays up to date? Some of the benefits of doing that, as I kind of covered here, uh, you know, streamline communication. So make it easy, make sure you're not talking, you know, saying, putting different messages out to the same person or the same message out to the same person multiple times. Uh, this will allow you to collaborate better. So having a centralized place where you store things like customer information or constituent information allows you to work with maybe your uh, your development team or your volunteers uh, to collaborate on them to help drive them through uh, the so-called funnel. Um, you can use that to improve your donor management. So on having this in the CRM will let you will tell you things like, hey, when's the last time this person donated? How much did they donate? What was the message we sent to them um, before they donated? What did we send to them afterwards? That will help you drive better, more fundraising. That can also you can apply those same um, those same features and that same functionality to things like volunteer management. Uh, and then collecting that all in one place is really going to help help you with your reporting and analytics. So you can track what worked, you can see what didn't, and you can make plans um, to strategize to do to improve in the future. Uh, some common CRMs that, that are in the nonprofit space that you know some of you probably use or have seen come across would be things like Salesforce, you know, obviously like the, the biggest CRM or things like NetSuite, Constant Contact, uh, more nonprofit specific ones like Neon CRM or Bloomerang, uh, than the one we're talking really specifically about today being HubSpot. So a quick poll, I think you'll see this pop up on your screen as well. We want to know, do you currently have a CRM uh, that you are, or a marketing tool? Uh, answer A, B, or C. So yes, we're actively use one. B, yes, but we need to utilize it more. C, no, but looking for one. Or D, not sure if we need one. I think there's a, a different yeah, up there. Yeah, that's right. I apologize. I'm going to end it. It's okay. I'll see. So you could answer that one too. Um, but yeah, if you can, uh, you can answer this in the chat. Um, and I think you might see this one pop up in a second. Um, so yeah, there you go. So we'll give you a, a few to, to answer that. And we'll, so you can respond, uh, we can get some, some quick background on, on the results. Yeah, see a few people answer in the chat too. So say yes, actively use one. Somebody just started with HubSpot, constant contact. Don't know, but they're looking for one. Great. It looks like about almost half of you, yes, but they need to utilize it more. Uh, and then a few people are no, or not sure if we need one. Uh, and then the others are you know actively using one. So that's kind of pretty much what we expected. I, I said, you know, a lot of nonprofits that we come into, into contact with have something, some type of CRM, but they might not be utilizing it to the, the best of its ability. Um, or, or they're not using it to uh, in a way that makes it scalable so that long-term um, that provides better results for them. So we'll, we'll cover a lot of that for you today. With that, I'll turn it over to Zach. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Um, yeah, Kyle just went over some uh, common nonprofit CRMs that you may be using. Um, cause and contact, we see that in the chat. Um, Arco is one that I haven't heard of, but I'm sure it's very similar to, to any of those other ones. But um, when choosing a, a marketing nonprofit, automation platform, it's like super important to understand that this decision is going to have a long lasting impact on your organization. Um, you're going to be using this platform on a daily basis, right? So you want to make sure that you're going to pick the right one that's ideal for your nonprofit. Uh, some of these CRMs are very like, um, they're very strict in what you can do and what you can't do. Some nonprofits kind of like HubSpot, what we're going to talk about today is very bendable, very adaptable to the needs of any specific organization, right? So um, the right platform can streamline your marketing efforts, it can drive growth and enhance your overall strategy. Um, so one way we like to look at it is with this grid. Um, you can see with the x-axis, we have how powerful the platform is. And then the y-axis is the ease of use of the platform. Um, so in terms of a platform's power, these would be everything like contact management, email marketing, lead nurturing, um, data and analytics, and then campaign management. Um, the more robust the feature set, obviously the more flexibility you will have in executing your strategies. Um, you'll see some familiar platforms in this grid that you may use that you may have used in the past, MailChimp, Bloomerang, 
Neon's another one. Um, we like to put HubSpot in the top right of this grid. Um, it's ease of use and adaptability to use cases for nonprofits is great. It's also a very powerful platform when set up and used properly. So what is HubSpot? HubSpot is an all-in-one platform designed to support marketing, sales, and customer service efforts. It offers a range of tools for managing your, your nonprofit's content across your website and social media. It'll help you automate marketing tasks, track your leads, and enhance your constituent relationships. With the integrated CRM in HubSpot, it'll enable your nonprofit to streamline your processes, improve collaboration internally, and then drive growth for your organization. It'll provide you with a full suite of tools that will help your nonprofit increase support um, both internally and externally, right? The ultimate goal for your nonprofit is to impact the external community. And this with HubSpot, it'll allow you to do that. Um, you can manage your entire constituent journey from one place. So when they come into your, when they first visit your website or your social media platforms, when they enter their information on your website, when they make a donation, all of that information will come into one place. So like I said, everything in one place, HubSpot is connected and powerful. Um, it'll provide you with that single platform that will help your organization grow better with all the tools that you need to do so. Um, you can unify your marketing, your fundraising, and your volunteer databases all within one in inside HubSpot through the contact management tools. It, it also enables internal communication and collaboration with throughout your team. Um, so through the contact records, through email integrations and task management in HubSpot, this will help your organization thrive internally um, so that you can have a greater external impact. Um, it'll also allow you to organize, track, and manage these external communications that you have. So such as like a live chat on your website, you can, you can manage your Facebook Messenger messages all within HubSpot. You can set up a ticketing system. There's so much more. contact list management. So this is a little bit of what a contact list would look like in HubSpot. Um, you're able to filter out all the different contacts in your system um, based on location, based on when they came in to, to, to HubSpot, um, based on, on if, they're a don if they're a donor versus a volunteer versus um, just a newsletter subscriber, anything like that. You're able to manage um, and filter all your contacts based on different criteria. Um, again, this is a little bit more about contact management. So this is what a uh, contact profile would look like in HubSpot. So on the left side, you have all that critical information, like their first name, last name, email address, any other properties that they would have submitted on forms in the past, um, any information that you have about them that would go on the left side. And then in the middle there, you can see um, there's, an, there's an example of an email. So this email would be um, from somebody on on your team to this person. So any emails that have happened between anybody on your team and the contact um, will show up in there. So everything is, um, you can look back on it and use it as a source, right? Um, as well as on the contact record, you're able to see um, past donation history, um, any events that they may have attended in the past, if you have events, um, anything like that, any related information for a contact will be on their contact record. And again, this is just the con showing a little bit more about the contact record. So um, you can have custom fields in HubSpot. Is, it kind of shows like a timeline of past interactions um, with your organization and an in individual contact. So like I said, if they've had any donations in the past, if they've attended any events, if they've had any interactions with your website, all of those will show up on the contact record. Um, so you're able to go back onto an individual person and see, hey, how has this person interacted with me? Maybe they've become like a really impactful person in your organization if they've come in externally, right? So um, just all that information about individuals um, is very helpful and very great to use. And then with HubSpot, um, you can see here, there's a ton of different um, platforms that are able to be integrated with HubSpot. This is one of the reasons why we love HubSpot because regardless of what your nonprofit is using, it can likely integrate with it. So this will ensure that like all your information is coming into one place. You have one single source of truth. Um, HubSpot is very applicable across all these different systems. Um, there's also a lot more that aren't even on this, um, on this slide that um, integrate with HubSpot so that you can make sure again, that you can act on the data that you're collecting across all the different platforms. And so it's again, all in one single source of truth, that being HubSpot.
Uh, just going to pass it on to Kyle here for Marketing Hub. Great. Thanks, Zach. So in this section, we'll kind of go through the different marketing tools that are available on HubSpot. Um, I do see some questions coming in the chat, so it's super exciting to see you all engaged. Um, we'll try to get to those uh, either at the end or I know Janelle's in there actually answering some questions for us in real time. Um, so as, as, as we started to mention, the different things you can use HubSpot for, everything from marketing. So think about this as like driving someone into uh, your ecosystem. So this is someone you, you may already know, you may not know, but you want to get them in, into your uh, into your ecosystem, get them into your CRM, get them engaging with your organization. One of the first, some of the conversion tools are some of the, are part of the first steps. And one of those things is something like a, a form, you know, getting to asking them for their information, just something as simple as email and first name. Maybe they want to sign up for updates. Uh, maybe they want to volunteer. What's nice about HubSpot is it has like a built-in form builder that gets more powerful every day where you can, as you can see on the, the demo here on the screen, um, kind of drag and drop the fields that you want to collect about someone right into that to those forms, store that information on a contact record. And one of the more powerful things about something like HubSpot is it allows you to do um, to do what's called progressive profiling. So it's basically not asking the same question more than once. So once you have someone's information, like their first name and email, maybe the, the company they work for or something like that, Next time you don't want to ask them all that information again, you can actually do things like through cookie tracking or um, just through collecting one piece of information like email. You could say, hey, Kyle, welcome back. Uh, what are you interested in today? Or how can we help you or something like that? And then you can start to ask like additional questions without having to add, having to have them fill out these, these bulky forms, which can help you with things like conversion rate optimization. Uh, and then as Zach was showing, all this information, the, the activity on these forms, where they came from, the information they submitted, all shows back up on that contact record you saw a little earlier. Then there's the email marketing tool. So now I've collected someone's information in the system. We know that they're interested in learning. We're learning about, uh, you know, if you if you use a, a tool like MailChimp or Constant Contact in the past, you've seen how how to build emails, how to build marketing emails. So HubSpot's very similar, but what's nice about it is it's got a, it's a lot more user friendly, especially from like the personalization standpoint. So in putting information in like first name, last name, conversion information, things like that. What's really nice about HubSpot is they have a, a feature called smart content, which allows you to build one version of something like an email an email or a landing page. Uh, and then based on where they come from, based on something on their contact record, uh, based on you know their location, based on uh, maybe a URL they clicked on, you can show them something different or slightly different, but that way you don't have to have different versions of that email or different versions of that landing page for different people. And that really allows you to, to um, kind of fine tune the message. These emails are going to be optimized for mobile. It's very, they're, they're responsive emails. They have a drag and drop builder. Um, they have all the, you know, the, the latest, I guess, latest and greatest um, uh, like HTML code and everything in it. So it's going to be, it's, it will help with deliverability and HubSpot prides themselves on deliverability. So you're, you know, you shouldn't end up, if you configure your domains correctly, um, they have, they work really hard to make sure that they don't get on any blacklist, that your domains don't get on any blacklist, that you're not spamming uh, customers, that they don't, they're not marked as spam. Whereas other providers, um, even the bigger name providers, oftentimes you'll end up in the, the, the either spam or um, the sponsorships folders and things like Google because of their lack of like deliverability knowledge and cleanup. If you get to the point where you're managing ads in HubSpot, HubSpot's very powerful for that too, connecting these things like Google ads, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn um, with, the, with the ads module in, in HubSpot, you can manage those ads, track those ads and report on those things and sync the leads that come in from those ads into your different audiences, different lists in, in HubSpot. Then once we've collected the information, we've seen how the emails have worked. We see how the landing pages are converting. Um, what's one of the more powerful features of HubSpot, especially as you move up into different tiers, um, are the dashboards and the reporting that you can create there. So you don't have to go in and manually run lists and run reports and export the stuff into another tool. Um, it, you know, a lot of the tool, a lot of the reports in HubSpot are just as powerful as you would get in like a BI tool like Power BI or Tableau without having to leave HubSpot. And what's nice is you can look at data across a lot of the different apps um, or the integrated apps in HubSpot, but you can look at, you know, data from a contact record, data from, you know, uh, a company and see, you know, how many contacts from some company 
came to our website and converted or decided they wanted to be a volunteer at over what period of time or you know if you have internal people doing development or sales you can see how how that salesperson is performing what your projections look like what it looks like you know kind of comparison this year to that last year this month the last month uh, and have those kind of be, be real-time reports and dashboards that are easy to access and easy to update with site with the segmentation capabilities that Zach started to touch on and things like the list tool you can get very granular to either include or exclude people in different pieces, either in marketing messaging, uh, you know, the workflow tools in automation, um, or in things like I was talking about, like the, the smart, the smart content with, with all the information you've collected about someone in HubSpot, you can get grand notice say, okay, I want to see everyone who's filled out a form during this time frame, but has never volunteered, right? So they're not marked as a volunteer. So that would help you create a list of those, those people. And maybe you create another list that says, I want to see everyone who's who's volunteered, but never filled out a form, right? And maybe they've never donated to us and have a separate list. And then you could create another list or create an email that says, I want to see all the people that are are not in that are in my in my database, but not in either one of these lists. So show me everybody that has an email address, but they're not in this list and they're not in that list. And that way you don't have to keep adding the same criteria over and over again. You can use those to build these like very powerful segments out. With that, I will hand it back over. Oh, this is still me, actually. I'm um, sorry. So we'll talk through uh, the donor management part on Sales Hub. Um, so I've, I've actually seen some of the questions in the chat talking about how, you know, it's, how it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to move from like the deal methodology, deal mentality that exists in HubSpot, and think of that and the sales methodology, and think of that as as far as donations, but. And we've we've faced this this issue for twelve years now. You know, working with nonprofits, I know it's it's sometimes it's hard to get around the vernacular of sales versus donations. But if you think about it, a donation is really a sale. You know, you're trying to entice someone to to take an action. So I mean, even if someone's not spending the money, it's still technically a sale. You're selling to them. You're, you're explaining to them the reason why they should do something, why they should take some action. Um, so, besides the fact that there are are really strong donation integrations available in HubSpot, you could actually actually just build. Um, sort of a donation tool right out of the box with HubSpot. Um, so you can tie this into things like events and ticketing, you can do direct donations, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising, get all that, collect all that, pull that into HubSpot. But HubSpot's still gonna show you that as like a sale, right? So it's gonna say how much money, how much revenue did we generate last year? Whether that's because somebody paid you for an item or because someone donated money to your cause. And then you can use the tools that are available in HubSpot to take action based on that. So anybody who's donated more than a thousand dollars, Let's send them this email marketing campaign to, or, you know, or um, fundraising campaign. Anyone who has expressed interest in donating but hasn't yet, let's send them this this request. Um, so it's pretty powerful how it works that way. With the donation integrations that they have with the different tools, there's different things you can do. Obviously, like tracking donations, so see how much they each spent. Um, measure the fundraising performance, so create like reports like just like I just talked about to see how much you've raised. So. If you look at if you think of people that set that set fundraising goals, say we want to raise a million dollars this year, HubSpot's a great place to track that information. Once we know how much someone's donated, we can say, okay, from January 1st until December 31st of this year, how much have we raised and what was our goal? And you can track that against the goal um, in like those reports and those dashboards. As I mentioned, you can also automate that workflow. So maybe when a donation is received, we want to send a thank you email to a donor. And maybe three months after that, we want to Remind them that they that they donated and ask them for hey can we count on you uh, you know this this month or this year or whatever uh, for an additional donate donation and make it really easy for them to continue to contribute to you. Uh, using that so just on the, on the two screens you can kind of see the things like we have stage names on the one side which would be which correspond to like what we'll call like the sales um, like a sales stage so we might have things like sponsorship lead. So that's somebody who comes in and say, hey, I want to sponsor an event. That's so that's 20% probability. We move them through our funnel. We get to a point where we send them a sponsorship document where they want to accept that. They verbally approve and say, hey, I, I, I want to work with you. I want to sponsor your event. They sign it. We send them an invoice for sponsorship. They pay it. And we can you know track that whole that whole part through the funnel. A different way to visualize that would be like in, from a donor standpoint, we could say, okay, we've got donor leads here. That's the beginning of the funnel. That's all the people that came in that said they might be interested in, don in donating to us. 
now we have them in here and we're working them either through a you know, development manager or someone who's doing outreach or through automation or email marketing. And we drag them, we drive them through that funnel to the next, these next phases. You can see how someone's moving through there. And if you look at this view, um, this is like a table, uh, not a table view. This is like a, uh, a card view where it shows you kind of across and at the bottom. So across is like them moving through that funnel. At the bottom, you can see the, the totals there as well. So this is like a kind of a quick heads up report. And now I'll turn it over to Zach. Uh, he can kind of give you a high level on volunteer management using HubSpot Service Hub. So yeah, so I'll talk a little bit here about um, just how you can use Service Hub um, in many ways. Um, one of those ways is for volunteer management as well. Um, a great thing, great feature in HubSpot Service Hub is the conversations tool. Um, this serves as a universal collaborative inbox for your team. So this will consolidate messages from various different channels, including the live chat on your website, your team email address, and even like Facebook Messenger can be integrated all this in one central location. So um, you'd have a feed, um, Facebook Messenger messages, any emails coming to your team email, anything live chat related on your website. These will all be in one universal inbox for your team. So um, with this feature, you can easily view, manage, and respond to all these different communications, um, whether they're from prospects, customers, constituents, volunteers, um, just in, just so it ensures that nothing slips through the cracks and so that your team respain, remains uh, responsive and aligned. With HubSpot as well, with Service Hub, um, you can create a ticketing pipeline. So very similar to the deals pipeline that Kyle touched on in the past. Um, ticket pipeline, this will allow tickets to be submitted on your website um, to bring people into the system. Um, you can automate the onboarding process um, bringing people like bring volunteers in or bringing donors in, um, have them walk through different steps um, for like in a ticketing pipeline. Um, next up would be forms and applications. Um, I think we were out of order a little bit there, but um, forms and applications. So very similar to the um, forms creatable in the sales hub. Um, you can use forms for volunteer applications. So you can track these applications from individuals. Um, you can create a deal for each application and then track that applicant's details, the source of where the application came in, um, if they came in via Facebook, if they came in via your website. Um, and then the status of the volunteer application can be tracked as well. Um, you can then create reports to see the amount, like to, to see recruitment performance. So um, again, where your volunteers are coming in from, the number of accepted volunteers, and then the success rate of your volunteer campaigns. Next up would be constituent feedback. So with HubSpot Service Hub, you're able to collect feedback from stakeholders and then improve your support process in, in the future. So um, creating forms, creating um yeah, creating surveys, feedback forms, all these to gather insights from your volunteers. How How is your nonprofit performing? What are places that you can improve to help your volunteers to support them a little bit more? Um, yeah, surveys are a great way to just collect that feedback from any stakeholders um, involved in, with your nonprofit. The next, we just have a poll. Um, we've gone over a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different HubSpot tools. We've got email marketing, constituent management. Uh, the forms and applications are great as well. Reporting and analytics. So, um, which of these are you the most interested in of the ones that we've covered? Um, there's also many more that we haven't covered. Many more that aren't on this list. So, if there are any more, um, feel free to share in chat. Just wait a few seconds for these results to come in and then. We see lots of people um, initially with HubSpot using um, who have used like something like MailChimp in the past for their email marketing, where they want something a little bit more robust, um, a lot more features. Um, the HubSpot email marketing tools are a great place to start. We can see here, um, yeah, 41% of you have said email marketing. So um, email marketing HubSpot would almost be a direct replacement for MailChimp, but then all those additional Hub HubSpot features um, are obviously all additional, right? So you get everything else above just that email marketing with HubSpot.
Sweet. We'll pass it over back to Kyle. Great. Uh, so still seeing a great number of questions coming through. So I think some kind of breeze through this to, to get to those for sure. Um, so just to, we're going to talk about our process with HubSpot. Uh, the first step is we start, we, we work to optimize, you know, the existing data you might have um, and move that into HubSpot. So we sync that data. Uh, we do that automatically and we do that kind of seamlessly. Uh, we empower your marketing, your communication, fundraising tools with that all in one place. Uh, and then we help build the reports and optimize with that real-time data and reporting that we're now collecting. Uh, we we integrate your systems. We help simplify by integrating the systems that you're already using. So we take a look at what are you using, what are you using those things for. If there's a reason to replace those with HubSpot, you know, the the, the more we can get in one place, the better. If uh, that, especially that helps reduce cost or reduce uh, the need for um, capacity internally or someone that that knows how to use that tool. Uh, we we create that single source of truth, so we have that consistency. Uh, and then we create, we help develop things like automated responses uh, and use automation for, of operations to help cut down the administrative time for you all. Our implementation process looks like this. It's usually about a 90 day, 90 day process. That doesn't mean it takes 90 days, but we can start using it. It's just that, that whole, you know, our, our engagement is usually a, a minimum of 90 days. Phase one is that data analysis we were just talking about. So figuring out what's there, what exists, uh, helping better architect that. And then we come up with a final solution for you and we format the, the data for those different use cases. Phase two is configuring the systems and migrating that data over. So we make sure everything's set up. We make sure we integrate these different systems. We test them. We make sure that the information's moving back and forth. Uh, and then we migrate the data over um, through that testing phase as well. And then we optimize and adopt and, and train. So we teach, teach you all, teach your team, um, how to use the system. We provide the resources that we've developed as well as the ones that are available through HubSpot um, for, for training. We help, we work through you all, with you all on usability and testing. Uh, and we work on ongoing enhancements and sort of next steps. And then we can also be, we can also partner with you for, uh, for management. Quick recap of um, how HubSpot works. It's an all-in-one solution. So it's kind of, you know, a lot of times we see organizations move a lot of their processes right into HubSpot, as we've kind of mentioned today, it can do everything from CRM to marketing, to donor management, to service, uh, volunteer management, all the different aspects of nonprofit operations. It can tie into your tools like QuickBooks and other tools. Uh, it integrates pretty seamlessly with a number of items. And if it doesn't integrate seamlessly, if the other tool is, you know, has an API or something like that, we can also develop custom um, integrations for those. Uh, there are nonprofit discounts available through HubSpot, so I've seen those questions come through. Uh, we'll talk about what those what those look like as well. Uh, it's got a user friendly interface. What's really nice about HubSpot is it is they do build it with best practices for user user experience in mind, and it's also you know HubSpot is is now there's there's college courses that teach HubSpot, there's even high school courses that teach HubSpot and HubSpot methodology in them as well. So it's more it's more frequently adopted um, for those best practices. Uh, we talked about integration capabilities. We talked about market marketing automation, so automating those processes. Not just marketing automation; it's really systems automation. So it's not really just like marketing automation is typically like, okay, if somebody does something, send this email or do this thing. With HubSpot, there's you know there's uh, an automation capabilities that go much greater than that that allow you to automate more than just marketing and follow up. They can automate you know repetitive tasks and administrative items that you might cover. Um, the powerful, the power of analytics and reporting. So we're constantly looking at, at, at reports and analyzing the data and improving. And then, as we mentioned, we we provide um, you know training and support. As far as pricing, um, we've seen questions. There is a start. There's a starter option here. There's also you know HubSpot that that starts at about twenty dollars per month for nonprofits. That's not going to give you everything that we talked about today, but it's a, it's a great start. Um, very competitive to a lot of the other tools around the same price point. Um, a couple of ways to get started with this. You can reach out through us. Um, I know Janelle posted her email address in the chat. You will have access to these slides afterwards that have all these links on it. Um, you can go through TechSoup's website uh, and learn more about like the HubSpot subscriptions that are available and how we can help with implementation services as well. Um, part of this webinar is we're providing a free download. So when you get this, you'll get a link to this. We just actually click on this slide. It'll take you to a page where you can get the download for how to cho choosing the right nonprofit CRM. So just thinking through, um, you know, what the right steps are, what the right things are to look for when you're when you're planning a CRM and 
And, you know, there's certainly cases where maybe HubSpot is overkill um, or might, might not work with, with some of your business processes. But, but as we kind of covered here today, it does, it does sort of cover all bases. Um, we, as we've mentioned earlier, I'm just putting this in here for good measure. Uh, you know, we provide the digital, digital marketing services uh, as essentials for tech soup and nonprofit organizations. So that's some examples of some of the items that we've, we covered and we talked about earlier, search engine optimization, social media, social media development and management, um, branding, custom graphics, analytics and reporting, all the email and marketing communications we talked about, even building out things like virtual events, webinars. Um, our CRM, CRM implementation, our typical implementation with HubSpot uh, starts at about $3,500 and we'll handle the entire setup and configuration of um, the CRM tailored to your specific need. As we mentioned, that's about a three month um, contract or commitment where we work with you. We get in, we do the audit, we understand like re really the needs, we develop a, a project plan and we execute against that project plan based on your objectives. Um, we also design art and execute like marketing targeted marketing campaigns we help you develop things like smart content like we talked about uh that and then personalize that so you guys have better engagement from the beginning and then we provide the training um your team and offer ongoing support packages as well and then for today for this webinar um, one thing that we wanted to put out there was like a special offer so 10 percent off that crm implementation it's already 20 percent off um, for nonprofit organizations so this is a deeper discount on that so it'd be 30% off of what we would typically um, put in place with someone. Uh, and we will work with you to make sure you get that HubSpot onboarding fee waived. So this is only for new clients. So um, if you don't have HubSpot currently or you haven't haven't um, started with HubSpot, if you've already been, gone down that path of them, we can't kind of go back and retroactively get your onboarding fee waived, but there is a typically a required onboarding fee um, when you work with HubSpot, when you join uh, and we're able to get that that waived if you if you work with us and you'll see it's a, a um and our implementation is much more specific uh, and tailored to you so on this slide you'll have the option to book a consultation uh just mentioned you attended this webinar so we can make sure we track that back to you one more slide and we'll be all done ready for questions uh so i mentioned earlier just you know how other ways to get a hold of us um, right through TechSoup's website. So TechSoup.org, just jump to the top of the screen, go to services and need to pick website services or digital marketing services. Um, that comes right to us. I did just see someone uh, out of the corner of my eye, Greg Sharp said, do we have to be, has to be booked today? It doesn't have to be booked today. Um, also, it doesn't have to be booked today. It just just mentioned that you were on this webinar. So if you you know come through this and, and fill this out you know, today, tomorrow, next week, something like that, just make sure you let, it, let um, in that form, let us know that, you attended this webinar. And with that, I'll turn it over for some questions. I'm gonna start in the Q&A one so I can go through these and then I'll jump back through the chat. Um, someone said they wanted to know how a document that has been signed came over to the platform as an attachment through the deal process. Um, I think I would need to know a little bit more about that. Uh, I think maybe Janelle actually answered that. Um, someone asked if, do you have any baseline data or testimonials that reference the kind of uplift you get migrating to HubSpot as an all-in-one solution? Um, obviously, any examples I can bring to a board to pitch shifting over to HubSpot for everything will help. Um, yeah, if you want to reach out to us, we can provide some of that. It is diff obviously different um, for industry, but we can talk about things like uh, enhanced deliverability um, and, you know, decreases in time. Um, you're not going to like full transparency. Like it's like, it's not like, Hey, if we switch to HubSpot, like immediately we're going to get like an uplift in number of leads. Like we still, the work still needs to be done. It's just a more efficient platform and a better way for you to, to a more transparent place to see what's worked, what's not to track this. Uh, and then to what we really like about it, as I probably mentioned, exhaustively now i guess is um like the ability for it to to help with capacity so you know not repeating redundant tasks and things like that let me go through the chat a lot of questions i'll try to get through a few of these 
I know Janelle's answering lots of these, but we do have lots of questions um, just asking like, hey, is HubSpot integratable with this platform? Is it integratable with that platform? Um, there are a lot of platforms that HubSpot does integrate with. There are also a handful that um, there are not direct integrations with. Um, some of those that don't have direct integrations with HubSpot, we're able to have an indirect integration using a third-party platform. So um, a lot of those are able to um, have an indirect connection to HubSpot, which is great. Um, I think that if there are any very specific use cases that you have, again, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be um, we'll be able to answer those questions on an individual basis as well. Oh, I see. I see, Janelle's answered a good chunk of these. Janelle, do you? have any that you want me to answer live yeah um i was just starting to answer elizabeth and andrea has asked kind of around um not overpaying and i think that's something we see a lot you know um it's a benefit of working with a partner like us where we don't have that same kind of incentive that working with hubspot would have right we can help you figure out the tools that you actually need and not kind of overspend and know that you can grow into this platform um, so like we said, if you want to reach out to us, we can meet with you, do a demo and kind of figure out piecemeal of what tools you need to actually get started and which ones you can kind of wait on and grow into. Um, I think Wanda had a question about um, maybe she can clarify. It says, is this just for CRM or any of the products like Sales Pro? Believe that was in reference to maybe our implementation cost. Yes. Uh, so the implementation, it really just depends on the complexity, um, but typically that would include like the starter level uh, marketing tools and sales tools. Any other questions? If you guys want to drop them in the chat. See someone asked, does HubSpot offer a board management portal as well? We currently use board network. Uh, there's not a there's not one that's built in HubSpot specifically. We could you could build one on there with their membership platform. Um, but when we've done work like that in the past, usually we keep the board management portal separate and we just tie HubSpot into it so we can track, you know, board members, we can track some of their communication and we can still use HubSpot to, to push out messaging, um, again, based on activity they take in those portals if it integrates with that. I'm not sure out of the box if that one works, but um, we can certainly check. Um, someone asked about best contact info. We'll we'll share this um, email with you or this presentation, which has that in it, uh, as well as links to uh, the different pages we mentioned today. Give it a couple more minutes if anybody else has any additional questions. Yeah, there's a few questions in there just about the slides and the recording. Um, we'll get those to you uh, by tomorrow at the latest, um, just for a recording of the webinar as well as all these slides. Well, this is great. I really, really interacted too with you all on the questions. So I appreciate everybody uh, coming, listening, uh, going through this with us. And you should get this either later today or tomorrow at the latest uh, with the PDF and the recording. Bye, everybody. Have Thanks, everybody. Morning.